We often think of a doctor's job as solely providing acute intervention, where patients come to us with their problems and we as doctors fix it. But a doctor's responsibility extends far beyond just solving problems. We have a duty to prevent these problems from happening in the first place. The practice of preventative medicine could save lives decrease healthcare costs, and decrease health disparities between communities. Today, we're sitting down with Dr. Bibbins Domingo, an internist by training and the chair of the U.S. Preventative Service Task Force. Together with some of the country's best physicians, Dr. Bibbins Domingo sets the nation's standards for preventative healthcare practice. Let's hear Dr. Bibbins Domingo's take on this. Thank you so much for joining us on DocBoss, Dr. Bibbins Domingo. Not at all. Thank you for having me. What does it mean to practice preventative medicine? So preventive medicine is the idea that there are things that we can do clinically that help people who are today feeling well, feeling healthy, uh, to continue to feel well and healthy into the future. Um, it's different from uh, identifying symptoms. It's different from treating diseases that people already have. It's really thinking about what we do today to help sure uh, in people who don't have signs or symptoms of disease to make sure that they continue to be that way well into the future. What are some current clinical and public health interventions that you're involved in that take aim at chronic disease prevention? Yeah, so um, I, I became interested in chronic disease prevention, particularly cardiovascular disease, because of patients that I had who were becoming very ill or even dying in their 40s. And I started to think of what I could I be doing in their 20s that might have prevented this. Um, so some of the work we've been doing has been trying to think about um, how do we identify who needs to be treated for elevations in blood pressure? How early should we be treating elevations in blood pressure? How early should we be thinking about things like lipid treatments or who's at risk for having uh, elevated LDL cholesterol contributing to disease? Um, because I'm focused on earlier in life, it also means that I'm trying to understand um, the types of contextual things that put people at risk, not just what happens that I could treat in a doctor's office, but what types of things in our environment, what types of things about where people live, work, and play put them at risk for disease that happens earlier. As the chair of the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force, what do you see as significant barriers or threats to the complete implementation of preventive medicine? So um, preventive medicine is hard in, in a general medicine practice or in a primary care practice because of other competing demands. So if a patient is feeling poorly, that's going to take priority. If you're actually treating a particular condition, that's going to take priority. Um, thinking about those things that we can do with, with the patient who's feeling well um, that might prevent them from being sick in the future, um, sometimes those are harder to prioritize. So the first thing I would say is probably just time um, because, because clinicians, uh, physicians are busy, especially in general medicine practices and in primary care practices. The other is that I, I think that, uh, and one of the focus uh, for the task force is, is, to, is to really be able to help clinicians and patients understand what actually works, what the science is. While we have this goal of making continuing for you to improve your health over time, some things that we do in the doctor's office are associated with harms. Um, and so one of the goals of the task force is to communicate this effectively to doctors and patients, and for doctors in particular, um, to really put the science back in the hands of doctors so that they can use that to help prioritize with patients um, okay. what might work. What are some simple, everyday things that physicians and medical students can do to implement preventive medicine in the daily practice? Yeah, it's a, uh, so a great question is, you know, what we can do um, because we're all busy in clinical practice. I think the, the, um, the most common um, concern I have from doctors who really, they have an idea of what they want to do, but they also want to engage patients in a discussion to elicit their own um, values and preferences for what they want to do. I, I think they're now increasingly uh, very nice decision aid tools for education, um, because what you really want is not just a physician telling patients what they read, but then help the patient to really, in the context of their own values, preferences, the things that are going on in their life, to make their own decision. And I think we're really fortunate now that this communication science, health communication, uh, decision aids, um, that this has been the focus of, of lots of study and uh, lots of attention from, from a lot of uh, investigators and clinicians around the country. Country. And for many conditions, they're now good tools that can help uh, guide complex discussions between doctors and patients. Now 
I'm going to speak with my uh, hat as the the chair of the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. Um, the U.S. Ta Preventive Services Task Force publishes 12 recommendations a year. Um, we have an open nomination topic. So I would love medical students in particular, but all clinicians, to really um, read more than just the top line letter grade, read the whole recommendation, read the evidence report. If you're reading it during our draft phase, give us comments on it. And then um, for what you can use in clinical practice, we have a very cool app. EPSS is our app. And the app is a nice summary of the body of evidence. And the nice thing about the, the app, the reason that I like to recommend it is because um, you can search by the characteristics of a particular patient um, and understand the list of preventive services that would be recommended for that patient based on the evidence. Mm -hmm.